When I am writing a novel, I do not think in chapters. I think on two levels, story and scene. Story is a character working on a problem, and scene is what happens to him or her, either progress or impediment. A novel is a series of scenes. Scene one, girl confronts father. Scene two, girl rescues and feeds pig. Scene three, girl raises pig. Scene four, girl takes pig to uncle's farm from where pig escapes. Those four scenes comprise the first three chapters of E.B. White's Charlotte's Web. Of those 30 pages, White uses about five pages for scene setting and summary and 25 pages for story. Five pages of non-story, 25 pages of story. By the way, I also want to point out that I don't think a scene always has to be action-packed or suspenseful or dramatic. It can be very quiet, as in White's Girl Raises Pig. For contrast, I checked out a hugely acclaimed book by a well-known adult author, first published 12 years ago. And I'm not going to name it here because I'm just using it as an example of something I find typical in many of today's novels. It was a good book to use for comparison because its first three chapters have roughly a similar word count to the first three chapters of Charlotte's Web. The first three chapters of the adult novel contain one real scene about a half a page long. All the rest is description, setting, and the character's thoughts. It includes a short piece of dialogue that is not a scene, it is backstory. Half a page of story, 29 and a half pages of non-story. Each book continues throughout in its respective pattern. The adult novel won a major prize on publication. I do not believe it will have the longevity of Charlotte's Web, which is still being widely read and enjoyed more than 50 years after its initial appearance. And the reason is simple. The author of Charlotte's Web focused his efforts on crafting a story through scenes, through what happens to Fern and Wilbur, while the author of the adult novel tried to build the story on the slippery, shaky base of the character's thoughts. I'll say it again, scene is when something happens, and the verb happen is key. If you have paragraphs of description or paragraphs of thoughts inside a character's head, nothing is happening. In writing and in life, it is what happens that matters. What is inside your head or your character's head doesn't mean anything in the end. It's actions that matter, what you or your character do when you're out there in the world, breathing and eating and talking and rubbing up against other people. The emphasis on motivation and perception and explanation and what's inside our heads is one of the most important developments of the 20th century in human psychology. We have brilliant thinkers like Freud and Jung to thank for this, and then the writers who picked up that ball and ran with it. A few of them pulled it off breathtakingly beautifully. I'm thinking of James Joyce and William Faulkner, who I believe are in a whole nother league, from me anyway. But I think that too many of today's writers have run too far in that direction. So much adult writing these days takes place inside someone's head, pages and pages and pages of nothing but what they're thinking and why they're thinking it. My brash prediction is that in a hundred years, this overemphasis on psychological introspection will be seen as the single greatest weakness of our literary age. Of course, no one, including me, will be around to congratulate me on the wisdom of this prediction, if indeed it proves correct, but I remain firm in my belief that story is the universal. Story exists in every culture and survives every vagary of literary fashion. Story endures because it is essential to the way we live and learn. And story does not happen inside someone's head. It happens in the world. That is why the character-driven, plot-driven label has always seemed to me to be a really useless one. How can you have a great story without a memorable character? How can you have a great story without a compelling plot? All the books I love have a character I care about in situations that interest me. Of course I want to know what's going on in their minds, but I want a sentence or two 
a paragraph at most, I need to get to know the characters in a book by seeing how they act and react the same way I get to know someone in life. 